How's it going everybody? This is Ruby and this is episode 51 of my Feed the Beast Machine tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the geothermal generator. So the geothermal generator doesn't really have much of a user interface. The bottom is where you would put items that you want to burn such as like a lava bucket you could throw on the bottom here and it'll em empty it into its internal storage and then use that liquid to then you know, power an MFE or whatever you want it to do. The top is for batteries if you want it. If we go ahead and take a look at uh, take a look at the building recipe, it's pretty simple because it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty low tier machine. It's four glass, two empty cells, and then two refined iron, and a generator. The cool thing with the geothermal generator is that it can be automated or you can just manually put items in. So for example, if I throw this lava bucket in here. You can see that it's going to go ahead and process this lava bucket and then start charging up this MFE. Now I have this one just connected with glass fiber cable and it's coming over here. And if we put another bucket in here, like for example, let's throw that one in there. It'll eventually, you can start to see the lava build up in here. Also, if it doesn't have anything to do, it'll also store, it'll also show a little graphic in there. So let's just grab another lava bucket for the future. So now you can also just pipe lava directly into it, which is what I would recommend. So if we go ahead and put it down right here, you can see that it instantly starts getting lava put in there. And you can see the lava starting to store up in there. And it's going to keep processing the lava at a very slow rate. Now, if you have the resources, I would recommend getting a geothermal generator. You can see that we emptied out this 16,000 uh, unit <laughs> Zycraft tank pretty easily into this machine so it's got a pretty large internal storage so this is the way I would recommend doing it I don't recommend setting up automation systems I'll still show you how to do that but I don't recommend that I recommend using liquiducts or waterproof pipes whatever you prefer and automating it that way so automating the geothermal generator with manual inputs such as just putting lava buckets into it is a little weird I also don't recommend it just because you have to deal with processing the buckets and then also getting the buckets back out of the machine is kind of weird so for example if we grab a lava bucket real fast and we throw it in the bottom it's gonna get sucked into there now we need to wrench this back down it's gonna get sucked into the geothermal generator and it'll get inputted into it and you can see that we now have an empty bucket however that's not pulling it out this side doesn't pull it out the back the top none of it pulls it out you actually have to flip the pipe around to where the same side that you input it in and it'll take the bucket back out now I don't really know how you'd automate this with a machine, so uh, it'll be pretty, pretty tricky. You could always just have the things stack up in there. However, I believe the machine will just not know what to do with it. It'll probably just spit it out. So I highly recommend against using buckets. So I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration on a use for the geothermal generator. Here I have a magma crucible with netherrack in it, a magmatic engine, golden waterproof pipe, and then geothermal generator, glass fiber cable, MFE. So if we just get this machine to cut on real fast, what this will do is that this will start melting the netherrack and it'll produce lava for you. This is a pretty standard kind of startup power source. Uh, if, you've got, if you guys have watched my uh, best starter power source video, then this, then this method will be you know, nothing new to you. <laughs> so this lava is going to come out. Some of it's going to go into the magmatic engine, and some is going to go into the geothermal generator. Now, usually you're going to have to kickstart your magmatic engine. However, I pre-powered this machine with a redstone energy cell. So as you can see there, this works pretty well, and it's only one wide. Yeah, you'll have to leave a gap for the other one, or else your pipes will connect to each other, and there won't be there'll be too much distribution for the lava. So I recommend keeping a one block gap between these two, and it's you know one block, <laughs> one block wide. So it's pretty easy to fit into your base somewhere. To pick up the geothermal generator, you can use any of the wrenches that work. However, I recommend the electric wrench. And what you're going to want to do is make sure it's in lossless mode. So you're going to want to hold down your mode key, and you can rebind this in your controls if you'd like. So you're going to hold down your mode key, your mode key, and then right click. And then you see down there lossless wrench mode enabled. Then you can just right click the machine, 
and you'll get it back. Like I said earlier, guys, if you can afford the thermal generator, then I would recommend doing it. It's a lot more efficient than this geothermal generator. But that is going to be it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to post it in the comments below or send me a private message on YouTube. I read all my comments and all my messages, so I will get to your question. If this video helped you out or if you enjoyed it, a rating would be much appreciated. And subscribe, as I always have new Feed the Beast videos coming out pretty much every day. <laughs> Thanks, guys.